what's up guys Texture here back with another video here i am back with another pc build last time i did an ultra budget pc build based on intel now it's time to up the game a little bit and go for an amd build it's gonna be super exciting as this build is not only going to be for multi-purpose use but also for gaming i'm sure you guys are gonna love it from components to how to build you will know it all. Sit back and enjoy. And as always, if you end up liking this video, make sure to smash that like button. That's all I request from you guys. I hope you'll do it. Alright, let's go shopping. First, let me explain you a bit about the components I have chosen for this build. For the heart of this build, I mean the processor. I have picked up the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. It has 4 cores and a clock speed of 3.6GHz. The good thing about this chip is, it comes with an inbuilt Radeon Vega 8 graphics. So you don't need a dedicated graphics card unless you are looking for something powerful. This chip should be good enough to get you started on a budget to do casual gaming. The box also has a rat cooler fan. Fancy name AMD, it looks solid. A manual, couple of stickers to flaunt on your build, that's about it. Next up for the motherboard. My choice is the ASUS Prime A320MK, a good budget board which has everything you will need. The box has the board. Two SATA cables, motherboard IO backplate, a manual which is a must read, a driver come utility CD, a quick start guide and additional regulatory info. Here you go, the ASUS Prime A320MK motherboard up close. It has an AM4 socket that supports AMD Ryzen 2nd generation and even the 3rd generation chips. You have two DDR4 RAM slots with max support of 32GB. M.2 slot for adding super fast storage, PCI Express 3 slot for additional dedicated graphics card if you need to add one. For now, we will stick with the inbuilt graphics. Two PCI Express 2 slots for other components. A total of 4 6GB per second SATA ports. And coming to the external connectivity ports, PS2 keyboard and mouse slot, VGA slot, HDMI slot, yep, comes on board, two USB 3.1 slots, two USB 2 slots, and two more USB 3.1 slots, and a Gigabit Realtek 8111H LAN port. Then the audio connectors for your speaker and mic. Cool thing is, apart from having high quality audio capacitors with noise isolation, for a good audio output, you also have LED light on the board that glows when you power up the PC, giving it a cool look. We'll show you once we are done with the build. Apart from that, other stuff you can control via system software. Overall, an amazing board on a budget that covers most of the things you need. Next up would be RAM. For now, I have picked up a single stick of Corsair Vengeance LPX 8GB DDR4 RAM. Speed would be 3000MHz. And here it is. The heat spreader is made of pure aluminum for faster heat dissipation. In future, I do have plans for another stick. Next up, the power supply unit. Since I plan to keep upgrading this PC in the future, I have gone ahead with the Antec VP Plus, a 550W PSU. Antec is a good brand and I have used few of the products. In the box you have the power cable and then the unit. Looks pretty stylish and built like a rock. Good one for this build. Next up storage. An SSD has to be on the list to make the system faster and I have gone ahead with an entry level western digital green SATA 120GB model SSD. It's a 2.5 inch drive. This will be the primary drive where I'll be installing Windows, so it boots faster and as you know, SSDs normally give you a performance boost. With a read speed of up to 545 MB and about 430 MB write speed, this should be good to get started. For additional storage, I picked up a normal 1TB mechanical drive and I would recommend the Seagate. And final one would be the cabinet. I picked up the Chiptronic Spline. This is a mid-range RGB gaming cabinet which can take in ATX and Mini ATX motherboard. And boom, here it is. 
Frankly, this looks amazing in person. Super solid build made of metal and glass. One side has tempered glass panel so you can showcase the components you have inside. A box with screws, cable ties, etc. And a manual. The front has diamond like design along with this wavy RGB breathing lights which I'll show you once we are done with the build. Looks cool. Also with that you have ventilation vent. Inside you have enough room for all the components including a separate bay for your hard drive. Neat cable management slots and to top it all you have a 120mm RGB fan which again I'll show you how it looks once we are done. To the other side you have two SSD slots so you can pop in additional drives in the future. Top you have vents. In case you want to use a liquid cooler you are covered. If you don't want to then the cabinet comes with a magnetic mat that closes the vents to prevent dust. Still gives you ventilation. Nice. Coming to the top controls the usual stuff. A mode switch to change lighting colors, reset button, audio ports, a USB 2 slot, a USB 3 slot, hard disk LED indicator and finally the power switch. Overall an amazing looking solid budget friendly RGB gaming cabinet with fan. Now that we have the components in place, it's time to put them together and bring this mission to life. Let's roll with my exclusive easy 12 step process. Make sure to refer individual manuals if needed. Step 1. Fix the Ryzen 3200G processor in the motherboard. Follow the arrow mark for the direction. Do it carefully. Then lock it in place. Step 2. Next, fix the cooler fan on top. The fan already has enough thermal paste pre-applied. So this time we'll go with what it has. First, remove these extra brackets on the board which is not needed for this fan as this is for older generation processors. Make sure the back plate is retained. We will be removing only these two brackets. Then carefully fix the fan in the direction shown here and tighten the screws. Step 3. Next, get the cabinet ready, remove the side panels. Organize the cables, get the screws, blah blah. Step 4. In the cabinet, fix the motherboard I.O. backplate in the slot provided. Step 5. To fix the motherboard in the cabinet, you will need to add the connectors provided with the cabinet screw packet. So connect them first and then tighten them. Step 6. Then align the board correctly and use the screws to fix the motherboard in place. Step 7. Then remove the hard disk bay and fix the mechanical drive to it. Fix it back to the cabinet. Step 8. Since we have separate SSD slots, Remove one SSD tray and fix the SSD to it with the screws provided and fix the tray back to the cabinet. Step 9. Now slide in the power unit into the slot and make sure to take the wires to the back so that later we can do some cable management. Use the screws provided and tighten it in place. Step 10. Now fix the RAM card in slot 1. Step 11. Now that we have all the components in place, it's time to connect the cables. Refer the manual and follow the markings on the board to do it correctly. CPU fan cable goes here. Then route the main power cables from the back via the slots. And connect the big one here and small one here. Then connect two SATA cables, one for the SSD and one for the normal drive. Make sure all cables are routed from the back for neat cable management. Other end connect to the drives. And from the PSU connect the relevant SATA power cables to both of them. Now it's time to connect the cabinet top control cables to the board. Make sure to do it right. Just follow the markings on the board. USB 3 front cable goes here. Let's connect the USB 2 cable here, audio cable here, front switches and indicator cable goes here.
Now to finish this build we have to wrap it up by connecting the 120mm cooler fan and the front LED. The fan has two connectors, one for light control and one for power. For power you can use either a normal power connector or connect it to the motherboard. I will go with the connector from the PSU. Next for the RGB lighting, connect the cable from the front cabinet. Then for the wavy front LED, it is powered by SATA. So you can connect it to one of the SATA power ports from the PSU. Step 12. Now that we are done with the connection, we will have to clean up the cable a bit and use cable ties to arrange them neatly. Do your best. Once done, slide and close the side plate of the cabinet. And ta-da! Finally we are done with the build amigos! Get ready! Look at that! Awesome, right? My camera is not doing justice here. You have to see this in person. It has tons of RGB lighting modes, both the front part and the fan, which you can change and play with as per your mood. The inbuilt LED strip lighting on the motherboard also is a nice touch. The objective of this PC build is to build an entry-level all-purpose PC on a budget that is also capable of casual gaming and one that you can keep upgrading to make it powerful as and when needed. Kinda like future-proof. Want to upgrade your processor? Yep, you can swap it with a supporting high-end processor. RAM? Yep, you can go up to 32GB. Graphics card? Yep, you can add one. Hard disk, SSD, M.2 SSD? Yep, you can keep adding them. Want to make it wireless ready? Plug in a good Wi-Fi adapter and you're all set. But I want you to keep three things in mind. During this pandemic, there's a huge surge in component prices and limited stock availability because of the sudden demand due to online classes, work from home situations, etc. This has led to overpricing irrespective of the place and parts. Second, I purchased these components from a local store and here is the pricing chart for your reference. However, online pricing might differ. Still, I will leave the links in the description, check it out. Price might go up and down and it's not in my control guys, so please understand. And third, this build is capable of medium level gaming. Of course, if you game hard, all you need to do is pop in a dedicated graphics card based on your budget and you can push this mission even more. But without that, still medium level gaming is totally possible. Not only that, editing work like Photoshop, video editing for YouTube etc. all can be done. Kinda like a multi-purpose mid-range build along with a bit of gaming. So if you have a budget of around Rs 29,000, then you can consider this configuration that I've suggested from the many options out there. For the monitor, I'll be connecting an ASUS monitor later, but for now, connecting my 21-inch Full HD Acer KA220HQ for demo. Before we end this video, many had asked, Sean, how to install Windows 10 easily? Well, let me quickly give you an easy 5-step process for that. From a different computer, maybe your friends or your laptop or from a browsing center, whatever, go to the link that flashes on the screen. Second, download the installation media creation tool. Third, insert a pen drive, minimum 8GB in the USB slot and open the tool that you downloaded and follow the on-screen instructions and select the pen drive that you want to be changed to bootable. Fourth, wait until Windows gets downloaded to the pen drive and is configured. Fifth, once done, take the pen drive and insert it in the newly built PC. Restart and hold F8 key. Select the pen drive and you can see the Windows installation screen pop up from the drive. Follow on-screen instructions and install Windows to the SSD. It's a very straightforward process, but do note you need to get a Windows 10 license key which you can grab from any reliable source. Alright, now that I'm done with the Windows installation, I did install and try a few games in medium settings. I was able to play GTA 5 in medium settings at about 35 to 40 frames. Counter-Strike about 30 to 31 frames. And PUBG for PC was playable at around 30 frames. This machine is a mid-range budget build that should take care of your casual gaming needs. You can always pop in a dedicated graphics card when you need to make it even more powerful if you plan to play high-end game titles. 
But my suggestion would be don't get a second hand graphics card or one that is refurbished. Always go for a new one. So that's it for this PC build video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more awesome tech content. We'll catch you in another exciting video. Until then.